Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. We are facing and in expecting a dynamic week ahead of us because we speak it, we believe it, and we receive it from the Holy Spirit. Well, if you look at the news reports, you may be a little dismayed. But if you look at the good report, you're going to be encouraged because God has a plan. I'm George Watkins. This is our Monday broadcast. We're here every morning except Saturday and Sunday. Trust you had a great weekend. Got to go to your favorite fellowship where the saints gather and heard a good word, prayed for someone. I just heard a dynamic healing testimony this weekend. My good friend who had Parkinson's disease. He said he picked it up from the results of Agent Orange in the in Vietnam. And he went to a healing conference to to get some you know some update on praying for the sick. He said, if the devil's gonna treat me this way, try to take me out, I'm gonna take I'm gonna heal as many people on the way. I thought that was good. He went there and got totally healed from Parkinson's disease. He could smell again. His voice came back and he was moving like a young man. Wow, what a powerful thing it is to touch the power of God and receive those type of miracles. All right, what's in store for you? What have you asked for? What have you desired? What is God's plan and what is God's direction? All right. I have a thought for today, and I'm just going to tell you it's short and to the point. Stay put. I heard the Holy Spirit say that to me. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you if you said it to me directly, but I'm passing it on to you. The story of my life is filled with times when God said, not now, stay put. Now, the purpose of this thought today is someone needs to anchor down and learn and be a student and grow up before you launch into your next plan. For instance, in the, nat in the secular side of life, I know I talk the spiritual and the church and, you know, pastoral and all that. But if you're going to go into business, how about taking some courses at the uh, local community college. They're usually cheap and good information. You want to be, a, you know, a store owner. You want to run a coffee shop. You want to open a business and build houses. Take some lessons. Learn your craft and learn your skill. I'm kind of a jack leg um, carpenter. Learned on the fly, worked with a couple of different carpenters and got a pretty good skill going. In my early days, we built houses, framed them up. We'd move into a bare lot. And this was <laughs> this was in the country before permits were there. Didn't need one. Just move in, dig the trench for the, you know, the foundation or whatever, and frame her up. Well, I thought I had a pretty good thing going, so I went down, got hired on a big high-rise project downtown Portland. I lasted one day. Why? Because I was not up to the skill that they needed. I didn't stay put long enough to learn the craft. I could stay up with, you know, framing houses, but not building high-rises. You learn the hard way when you get out there and realize I'm way past what I ought to be doing. I should have studied longer. Okay, now, in the spiritual side, if you've got a ministry that is cooking in you, and most of us do, we just don't know what it is. It irritates us, frustrates us, excites us, and motivates us, and usually scares us. And most of us run ahead of God in the early days. We would jump the gun. I'm hearing the Spirit of God say, stay put until you learn your skill. The scriptures talk about the young pr uh, prince, soon to be king, is under the tutors until he's a certain age. 
And when he becomes a certain age, then he inherits the rulership. That's the same way it is with you and I. No matter if you're going to be a, a pastor, an evangelist, a doctor, a lawyer, a husband, especially a husband, and a wife, you need to learn and get some education. Not just brainy education, but spiritual education. Amen. Well, how do you stay put? What do you do? How, how do you hang in there, baby? Well, I tell you what, it teaches us how to pray often. We call out, cry out to God, oh God. <clears throat> Arliss and I went to uh, Southern California and a great um, charismatic church. It was a sovereign act of God that moved us there. And it was a pivotal two years in our life. I learned skills I had not learned before. I had been traveling as an evangelist and <clears throat> worked with my father in his churches, but we were small, you know, kind of countryfied. But I moved into a large charismatic work with 1,500 people, all the bells and whistles and all. We had nine pastors on board and we had our staff meetings and we had our staff retreats and our the whole thing. We had a crash course in pastoring, a crash course in in setting schedules and running, you know, having a secretary and planning ahead farther than two weeks away. It was an amazing time of life. But I was crying out to God. I wanted to preach. I wanted to preach. Well, I was preaching once in a while, but not. I wanted to do it more often. So it put me on my face and in the closet and crying out to God and asking God, when, Lord, when? Well, unbeknownst to me, seeing I wasn't as smart then, <laughs> ha ha, as I am now, God had me staying put. There was a season of time I needed to be there to learn something because it wasn't long after that, a few months after that, we came to the Northwest town that I've been in now for 40 some years. And the skills that I learned there gave me the ability to, to start pastoring. And I learned as I went, obviously, but I took those skills and put them into operation. If I hadn't had that stay put time, I would not have had the ability to organize a, a congregation, to organize a, a functioning system, to have a church that had order, had schedule and so forth. All that came out of that season and two years in Southern California where God told me to stay put. Now, there's a number of other things that I probably missed it in <laughs> that I'm not confessing today, but that's between me and God. Times when I ran ahead of God, when I jumped the gun, when I should have stayed put, when I didn't stay put. But the grace of God covers a lot of things and takes us on to the next plateau. Well, this whole thing then, of how do we endure until patience comes? I was zipping around yesterday trying to get somewhere and a guy got in front of me that was slow <laughs> and I didn't want to wait. So I, I said, I'm going to take another route, you know, cut around the block. I know how to do that. So I jumped, turned, and I was rushing and lo and behold, there was another guy got right in front of me doing the same speed. And I yelled out in humor, obviously, because I, <laughs> I know this one. I want patience and I want it right now. And God says, slow down, son. I'm putting them in front of you just to remind you I've got a pace and I've got a place. And if you'll stay in my pace, I'll put you in your place. Oh, that's a good title. I'm going to speak on that. <laughs> I've got a pace and I've got a place. I got to write that one down. And if you stay in my pace, I'll put you in your place. That rings. I'm, as the old <clears throat> preacher says, that will preach. Amen. Well, 
your mind may be spinning, your spirit may be uh, wondering, uh, what does it mean to me? What should I do? Should I stay or go? The Holy Spirit has some um, amazing ways to give a witness. And there's some practical things that my wife and I have done over the years. We've determined in the early days, of course, to be in agreement with most of the things we do. It's an interesting thing to to have a partner, a, a husband and wife in, in particular, that to have learned how to get a witness and be in agreement. Now, when my wife in the early days wasn't agreeing with me, I took it as an offense. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I have to tell you, if you've listened to me before, I've already confessed this. <laughs> so, so don't ring the phone and tell my wife I said it. <clears throat> there were in the early days, I didn't, I, I was smarter. I was wiser. I, she was just a teenager and then, a, you know, a young bride. So it took me a, a season, short season, hopefully, to begin to learn what kind of a unity happens when two people come together and agree. Bible says if two, sh two or three shall agree as touching anything. So the first thing that you do is get a witness between that one that you have a relationship with. Could be a spiritual partner if you're not a married person. Could be a, a pastoral uh, one that God's put in your life, a spiritual uh, counselor. Those type of things, you can interact and get a witness. Now, I remember the story of Oral Roberts when he was building his great, uh, one of his projects, he had a bunch of them. And he had, a, he had a, a board, a group of men from around the nation that were, I mean, they were the, the CEOs and the business owners and people of success. And he had them on a council board give input. And he said, this is what we're gonna do. He laid out the plan. And they said, well, we don't think it's right. You know, we shouldn't do it. He said, go pray about it. They did that about four times until the fifth time or so. He said, well, fellas, thanks for your input. I'm doing it anyway. Why? Because in some places in your walk, you take those daring faith steps where you know that you know. I don't recommend that when you're just out of the chute you know, just a bud on the vine. I don't recommend it when you're too young to know what's up or down. But I do tell you, there comes a time in your life when your spirit begins to mature and you know the witness of the Holy Spirit. Now, there have been times in our marriage, of course, when we didn't agree. And I said, listen, I feel this is the Holy Ghost. And she trusted me enough to make some steps. <laughs> Did Were they always right? I ain't telling. <laughs> oh my goodness, 54 years, 55 coming up. I've made a couple of wrong turns, but God covers it. Amen. Well, I love you all. This is Monday. Monday's a good day to stay put over there. No, that's not necessarily geographic. geographical. If you're about ready to move, don't let me confuse you. <laughs> Get the witness of the Lord though before you do it. Amen. Love you all. I will see you in the morning, bright and early, with a good word from the Holy Ghost. Don't, don't forget, like me, thumbs up, share, you know, all the comments, sign up, whatever it takes. And thank you for your giving and your prayers. If you want to send us a financial blessing down there in PayPal or the address. Until tomorrow morning, may the Lord bless you and keep you and stay put.